Hello everyone, in my last video I showed me outside capturing images of Jupiter and the Moon using my big 8 inch reflector and basically on screen I showed you the captured video files of the planets and the Moon and also the final stacked final processed image and that prompted some questions about well how do you go about getting from the the movie file that you capture in SharpCap which is just an example of some capture software that's free that you can use with your astro camera to capture movies and images to a final processed pretty looking image and that's what I want to address in this video we use sharp cap which is free to download some people use fire capture or as cap basically it's just image capture software and what you do is you select your camera from the the camera option top left so it's got it says camera there it's a drop down menu pick your camera off there that will bring up some settings in the control panel where you can choose your gain your exposure time the type of file you're saving etc i'll overlay some footage so you can see a bit better example of that the reason we capture a movie of for example jupiter is because the scene conditions are really wobbly and occasionally it stops wobbling and it, you get a nice sharp image where the atmosphere stop wobbling and what we want to do is stack all the sharp frames together but not stack any of the wobbly frames together which are going to be more blurry and it's called lucky imaging because we're basically lucky when we can get a gap where it's nice and still with things really steady and we can capture nice sharp images and we use software called auto stack art to do that that's one example of stacking software and it's free to download i'm going to put all these in the description so you can download them as well so we've got a box on the right here this is where the image the film of your planet or moon is displayed and the box on the left is basically a, just a few tick boxes which helps us generate a quality graph which when we look at the graph will basically allow us to choose an appropriate percentage of frames to stack so we'll tick some boxes here it will produce a graph up and down when it's up it's good quality data when it goes down it's low quality data we can see the percentage of the good quality compared to the bad quality and choose an appropriate percentage so that's just an overview so if we do that now if we go to file open file we're going to open my AVI movie file of Jupiter here that I took the other night with the 8 inch reflector and we can see it here on the right so we can basically get this a bit bigger and a bit more centered that's just adjust the width here using that slider and get rid of that red stuff there okay and then we'll zoom in a bit using the zoom function and this is just going to make it better for seeing where we're putting our alignment points because we're going in a bit we're going to pop some alignment points on the planet so when we're stacking it knows it's got some reference frames to stack the images together so that's how we're going to leave that for now we're going to go back to the left hand tab and the first thing to see is it's automatically on planet COG stands for central gravity. If you're unsure what something means, just hover over it and it will give you a brief description. This is for planetary recording. You go to the surface bit over there, it says for solar, lunar, deep sky. So this is going to basically look at the contrast between the black night sky and the bright planet. And we've got this tick box here that's recommended to keep on if you read that it says recommended automatically determine the center of gravity background values so for planets we want to keep that ticked on and then if we go down we've got this quality estimator mainly we just leave that on automatic but if i untick automatic we can explain a bit more about this so it's got this figure four and that's for when the your data is kind of average it's got an average amount of noise an average amount of detail if you find that you've got very clean looking footage it's low noise and high detail we can drop that down to say three or two and this is for very high signal to noise ratio data and it will do a better job and conversely if your if your data is unfortunately not very good it's noisy not very detailed we can drop that down to eight but i mainly just keep that on automatic now we can just go straight to analyze and it will create a quality graph but we also have the option to 
double stack. Now, the, the way this software works is it will create a reference frame and stack a percentage of the frame of the best frames using that reference frame. But the way it creates a good reference frame is to take a bunch of some of the better frames and stack those together and create a synthetic good quality reference frame with low noise and high detail. And we also have the option to go through that process twice so we can double stack our reference frame. So it will go through the process of getting a bunch of high quality frames to stack together to create a reference frame and that narrows it down. So if we click on analyze now, it's going to create our quality graph. While it's doing that, I'll talk to you a little bit about what's on the right here under stack options. So we can choose to have our final outputted image as a TIFF, PNG or a FITS file. For planetary, we mainly want to be using TIFF because it's got a lot of data that we can push and pull and bring out detail. PNG is more of a condensed file, but better than a JPEG and FITS is for scientific purposes. It's a bit like a TIFF, but it gives you something called metadata, which is basically information that's useful for scientists. That so gives you like the time uh, the image was taken, what camera, all the camera settings. So now we've got our reference quality graph here. The best way I can explain this is if you can see this is going up and down. The up bits are good quality, the down bits are bad quality frames. If this was all good quality, like there was a line going up here all the way across completely evenly, then you might as well stack 100% of your frames because they're all the same quality. But if you notice only 25% of your frames are showing really higher up, then you might as well only choose 25 because if you choose 50% or and only 25% of your frames are good quality, the software's got no choice but to then select 25, an extra 25% of bad quality frames to include in your data. So all this we've done here is to create a quality graph which enables us to determine what percentage or what number of frames to stack. So I think about 25% of these are looking really good. So I've chose 25. But if you're unsure, what you can do is you, you've got four boxes here. So you could pick 25, you could pick 30, you could pick 40, and it would output separate files for each of those percentages. You could do one for 50 even. But I'm just gonna do 25% here, because I think 25% of this Looking at the graph, 25% look really good and the rest look like they're subpar. Now we've got all these options here, like normalize stack photo. If you hover over, you can you can see what it does. Normalize the brightness of resulting stack, both dark and white points. So it evens out the bright and the dark points. You've got some basic sharpening there, an RGB, red, green, blue align. So you've got a better color balanced image. But I do all this in Registax because I think it works better if you just leave that for Registax. Now this super resolution bit here, this is useful if you are, if you capture your planetary image, for example, and it's a tiny little planet with very little detail. What you can do is you can synthetically increase its resolution. So if I do three times, it will create three times as many pixels and then use neighboring values that are already of the pixels there between white and black, you know, the shade of the pixel. It will use the neighboring pixels to determine what shade these synthetic pixels should be and then give you a high resolution uh, image, but it's based on approximating the neighboring values of the pixels around that artificial pixel, if you get what I'm saying. but. If you've got quite a big picture like mine, you see I've got quite a good image scale on Jupiter and you're not you're not undersampling, you've got good resolution in other words. I'm just going to keep that off basically. And then we what we need to do as a final step is to place some alignment points. What we've got here is some tools to allow us to put little boxes and alignment dots on here, which are going to be like anchors to allow the the, the, the frames to stack accurately on top of each other. Because if you scrub through here using this line here, you can see how the planet is wobbling with the atmosphere. So to get around that wobbliness, so the, the images are stacked onto each other accurately, we need to put some alignment points. 
these are the, the size. If I click on 32 and then place AP grid, which AP stands for alignment point, you can see all these boxes and red dots. So these are all the anchor points it's going to use to accurately stack the frames on top of each other for the sharpest image with the lowest noise. And you can see I've got multi-scale picked and that basically uses big boxes, little boxes, so we can anchor on small details, larger details, etc. And that's how I do it. And all I'm gonna do now is finally select the third final thing, which is stack. And it's going to do its magic, stack 25% of the best quality frames together for the best image with good signal to noise. Okay, and that's all done. So I'm going to get rid of that now and hopefully we've got a file here because I selected it to create a file and this is our image. So I'm going to cut that and paste it onto my desktop next to my AVI movie file. So we started off with a movie file. We've stacked the best 25% of the frames in auto stack art to get this image here but we're far from done. We can make that look much better using Registack 6. Again, this is all free to download and I'll put links in the description. So I'm gonna to go to select. I'm going to find my stacked image of the best 25%, open that. And there we got a nice big picture of our planet there and lots of things that we can play about with. The first thing I do is go to RGB balance click auto balance and that gives us a much more realistic natural looking balance between red green and blue next I go to histogram and I usually need to sort of slightly brighten the image I find so I just drag that to the left a little bit mm, a bit too much that will do and I don't like how it's all wonky on its side on the her, as we say in Suffolk, England. Uh, so I'm going to go to flip, rotate, and then just twizzle that red arrow round to where I think it needs to be. Finally, it comes a good bit. We've got wavelets here. It's like a graphic equalizer. We can slide these along to pull out detail in the weather belts, etc. There's two options. You can go Gaussian. That has not really that much effect compared to keeping it on default. If I move that by the same amount, you can see that has much more effect. So we basically slide these along until you've got the image looking how you want it and this is purely you know this is purely to taste you can just adjust these how you want some people like to have their planet really crunchy looking like this i personally like to have it a little bit more what i'd call natural looking which does mean it, it being a bit softer but i just prefer it to not have sort of hyper contrast just try and keep it a little bit natural maybe a little bit crunchy but not too much well for the for the purpose of this demo we'll just keep it like that and i'll hit do all to make sure it's uh fully complete before i save that image now just so i know that the file's been through registats i'm just going to do underscore reg six so i know it's been through registat six We'll get rid of that now. So now we've got three files here. We've got the original AVI movie file that we captured on the night. We've got the auto stack art file where we stack the best 25% of the frames to get the sharpest image with better signal to noise. And then we've done further processing in Registack 6 to do a better job of color balance and to bring out more detail and orientate it correctly. Uh, thanks for watching if you got this far. A big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all the support you give the channel. You're absolute legends. And if you like what you see, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.